Race five of the BMW IBSF. Four-man bobsleigh World Cup on a snowy Sunday in Austria's Tyrol Mountains. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the double Olympic venue in the, uh, the mountains above the village of Eagles. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, John Morgan, ready for the big day here in Innsbruck. And the final race as we rush up to Christmas. An appropriate time, John, for sleighs to be out in the snow. Well, the event also books as a European Championships, Martin, a double event. Big thing here in Europe, and the track well built for the 76 Winter Olympic Games. It was the first track built for combination use of bobsled and luge. Since then, in 2002, we now have skeleton and women's bob in 2002. But the track really is a challenge because it lulls you to sleep up here. The start really long and flat. Getting get down before this first curve so meticulous so quiet steering around the first curve there's a speed trap here that has a lot to do with what you're going to do at the bottom you must have the great start and great speed velocity up here curve four five and six no mistakes allowed up here again it's not very fast as compared to most tracks at the top then we come into the first of two pivotal parts of the track chrysal look at the blue lines you want to have a consistent exit into curve eight. Now the second pivotal part of the track right here, curve nine, you have to exit here. This is your last speed advantage. Curve 10, we've seen a lot of sleds go up near the roof. Three quarter combination, 85 miles an hour. And that's quick at a four man bobsled on a track built 40 years ago. And then the real challenge for the brakeman, stopping the sleds. Track record, Francisco Friedrich. We'll see him pretty quick. He won yesterday's two man event. Well, there's only one previous four-man winner in the field. Johannes Lochner is our World Cup points leader. He also is our reigning world champion. He tied that with Francesco Friedrich last year, who's also the two-man World Cup champion, uh, world champion. Nico Walter, second in the standings after a, a great start to his season in both two-man and four-man. Three other previous, previous medalists in the field, as well as a one-time winner or four if you include Justin Olsen, who's driving, but has also taken medals, pushing with Steve Holcomb, a multiple medalist and former race winner on this track. And the start, well, right alongside this snowy sled park is the most important part of the track, perhaps. Getting that good getaway is going to be vital. It is snowing, it's coming gently, and unlike Winterberg last week when there was a gale behind it, there is no wind. It is still. However, the snow will fill the grooves at the start and it will fill the track. Alana Myers Taylor racing here with three guys behind her. So she goes off fifth. Alexis Dornev will be the first of 26 sleds from 14 nations. So far this season in four World Cup four-man races, we've had three different winners and we've had nine different medalists. Only Johannes Lochner has doubled up in victories. Other than that, uh, Nico Walter has had a medal at all but one of the races. Race five for the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup kicks off with Russia's Alexei Stulnev, fifth on this track last year. Best ever four-man result, bronze in Koenigsee in January of this year, the last race in Koenigsee before the World Championships. Well, he's been in a little bit of a slope. 21st place last week in Winterberg, and he's got a 12th as his best finish of the year in Park City, and just not the guy that we're used to seeing. 512, watch the speed on the left here. That's what you want to use to evaluate the good, the bad, and the ugly of that first 100 meters. That's a real, real telltale sign of how good the athletes pushed and then got in the sled. Still Nev, down in only 30th place in the overall World Cup rankings in terms of points behind some guys who have not even competed on World Cup yet and have racked up their points in lesser racing championships in Europe and North America. So you're right, the Russians really are struggling for pace. Without a start, 5.12 is not going to get it done for him. 124.7, 77.5 miles an hour. I thought we'd see sleds in the 80s. Well, we may do, but, you know, they've been sweeping the track most of the morning, and as fast as they sweep, it fills up behind them. So this is a little bit like two of the training days where we had snow. We had one clear day in training. 96 hundredths of a second off the track record set last year. Yep. By 
Friedrich, look at the. Can we see anybody else behind him? Keep your keep your eyes. If you can see shoulders and everything back there in that straight shot, that's not good aerodynamics. And here, tough to get these four mans in trouble. But what's the back end here? Well, not. Ooh. We've seen Sled's opposite role yeah. over there. It's Keep the your eyes on that today. The going away shot there. The labyrinth. These things are just vile to try and get down. Max Manjinov, the second of our Russian athletes, 11th in the race here in Innsbruck last year. Best ever four-man result, seventh place in Whistler a year ago in December 2016. And Anjanov, like teammate Stulnev, has been fumbling around trying to find some pace all season long. See the clock? The, the good teams will get off within four or five seconds when that talk, clock turns green. Don't know why they waited 20 seconds like that. And, He's in a little bit of a slump, too. You yeah. know, didn't make the cut in the first two events and 20th and 18th, uh, Whistler and Whistler and uh, Winterberg last week, respectively. And so the speed, 50.4. Exact same start time. He's got 50.3. That's relative to how you get in the sled. Now the driver maneuvers that first curve. Track on the left there, you saw. That was the second of the loose starts coming in. The men's loose start. Is right beside the bobsleigh start, the women's down there in turn three, four. Nine hundred back. Now the corner nine, one of the critical exits because he sets you up for ten and you sweep high through there and then dive into this labyrinth. And if you're on right, you're okay. If you're on late, it gets later, 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 all the way down to the line. And as he comes across, he's 14 hundreds of a second back. Well, with 26 sleds, you've got to say that at the moment, Stolnev and Anjinov are definitely not guaranteed a second heat. i got to believe they are because they went early. In fact, we're down to 25 sleds because I heard this morning that Monaco will not go. A foot injury for Rudy Rinaldi and a hip injury for Brayman Boris Vaughan. Look how high he is above the lines. Keep your eyes on that. That could be the preferred line of the day. It's a lot easier. You won't see these four mans getting as much trouble as we saw the two mans yesterday. Two mans are like a sports car. The four mans are like a big truck. They both have a mind of their own when they come down these icy chutes. Yeah, the two-man sleds were quite tail happy yesterday. This is okay. Ivo de Bruyne of the Netherlands, third of our 25 starters. 27th here last year, missed the cut by some margin. Didn't make the cut in yesterday's two-man race either. And was then subsequently disqualified. Haven't yet found out why. Best uh, four-man World Cup result, 15th in Lake Placid, December last year. Go. 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 Brand new sled. Is this the brand new? I think it is. Nice. Not sure it, is. it certainly hasn't got the new front end on it, but it's hard to tell underneath. 513's not bad to be equal. Let's see the load, the 50.2 or so. 50.2, and the load was not as good, it's not as exact as the Russians. And the uh, rear brake handles drag down the yeah, siding yeah. as well, which doesn't help. Anything that increases friction or slows the sled down in any way is devoutly you to be avoided. See, you can see these four mans are coming a lot straighter, and 91.1, that's a half a kilometer down. I more keep track of the speeds than the times. The speeds will tell you everything on this short 1400 meter or 1300 meter track. Well, nice four, exit. Four. Nice exit, 9 to 10. Very skiddy there in the two man race yesterday oh. and for the women. Oh, a little Change late direction into the there. Labyrinth. And holds it all together. 2600s back, 51.83. Oh, Tom Delahunty doesn't look overjoyed with that, does he? And I'm not 51, entirely... 83, eh? I yeah. think we're going to see 51, the Russian time, 51.57. I think 51.60 is going to be, I'll mark it right down now, Martin. 51.60, I'm predicting, is the uh, top 20. Well, the Dutch certainly have a lot of support. Well, I see him try and get the handles in. I think this is the brand new sled, Martin. Look at it, Groot. It's yeah. already hitting. Look They're not the coming there. in for him. That. And he's trying to get himself back down well, They've in. only got three trips in the sled. I, th yeah. I think this is the new one. And Janko Franchik could not get in there at all at the start. And if you look at him, there's not a lot of great aerodynamic profile. Watch that shot. Ooh, boy. Yeah, really snaps around there. There's Evo. Next up, Maciej Luty for Poland. Best four-man World Cup result for this young man, 15th in Altenburg. Well, that's as long back as January 2013. So. A year Ooh. out from the last Winter Games. Yeah, didn't compete here last year. Ah. Polish 
gradually rebuilding their program at the moment. And actually, Must this some season... some kind of a hold here. Yeah. Okay. Something going on. Oh, there it is. 50. I see how quickly they go. The, I'll guarantee you the Germans will be gone within six, eight seconds after that thing turns green. This is all right, as long as it happens at the time you're expecting. If you have to wait, then you've got to get yourself going again. Get in, get down. Watch number two, wait for the three guy. Ooh, nice stumble there. In, down, and pretty good. 15, not the same as the Russians or the Dutch, but the speed, 51. 50.1, the lowest speed of velocity through curve one of the four sleds so far. And that's why he's 1100s back. Uh, only 1100s at this stage, but first to second, the gap at the bottom of the track was only 1400s. Kosakowski on the brakes here is that 400 meter sprint champion, isn't he? Uh, no, no, he was on the two man, two -man. sled yesterday. It looks like he's been rested up today. He normally does both. And then everybody's trying to avoid any sign of a niggle now. If you don't have to use your brake run, you won't very wild down into the labyrinth. Again, it was snowy in training. Boy, coaches are not happy with that. 3,300s back. I'm not sure he's going to be overjoyed with that either. He's just 700s behind the Dutch sled, but we saw sleds getting cut by a hundredth in the skeleton and the bobsleigh races over the last couple of days. So Nothing positive. Oh, has he cut his hand on the left hand? No, maybe not. Just looked like he'd uh, gashed his hand. Well, he's having a stronger season this year, Matthias Luti. Above the blue lines. Let's see him exit. Then here's down below in the speed part of the track. Look at the heads. Look at the pressure there. I mean, look at the back end. And can we see anybody back? Oh, look at the way that yeah. sled rocks back and forth. Well, that's all that meat getting thrown from and side to side. An hour. Alana Marge Taylor for the USA. Fourth ever World Cup start in four man bobsleigh. She took her third silver medal of the season yesterday in the women's race. She's got Brent Folk, Chris's younger brother, Josh Williamson, and her husband Nick Taylor on the sled. How cool is to have the husband in the back of the sled? Well, 526. Well, that's, you know, and I'm questioning why Alana's even doing this. First of all, she's seven weeks away from the Olympics. Number one, this means nothing, this run. And plus, she had to take a couple heats in practice, which might have detracted from her, her World Cup two man or uh, two women event. Oh, look at that skid there. And she's got a bad back. So, you know, the last thing you want to do to cure your back in the Christmas break is to start it off coming down the four man sled here at Eagles. A little bit of a skid and a tap between 9 and 10. High line in 10 is the approved one. Late exit works as well. Good line into the labyrinth. Whoa! Whoa but really crossed up. And the American coaches are up there just cringing. Yeah. yeah the, the good thing is, the good thing is she's throwing down. Yeah. And uh, probably won't make the second run. But I question, you know, I under, don't understand. I could see if it's a year before the Olympics, but seven weeks out. Nothing positive here we think can gain. You know, I'm sure there's an argument for it, but just my opinion. Again, now, into the labyrinth, this is getting four late. Four-man sled. It's hard to Ooh. get him in trouble. And oh, the U.S. coaches, the whole U.S. Right. program. This is the best chance for a gold medal for the United States, and she's in a meaningless race. That's as in trouble as it gets down there without a crash. That was uh, a get-out-of-jail card played. Wow. By Alana Myers we will not Taylor. see another sled do that in this race. Alexei Stulnev of Russia, the leader. Five down, 21 to go. Look how quickly the Germans are going. This is Francesco Friedrich, our joint four man world champion. Three four man wins, including the world championships. And the start, oh, surprisingly, 499 speed. 51 1. No one's even close. Even though it's snowing, that's only 600s off the track record. Look how much advantage he's got already because of the better start. It just doubles before yeah. that next clock. Fourth here in last year's World Cup race, but the World Championships the season before, he took the silver medal. And in the World Championships, he had the lead going into the fourth run, and he had problems in curve 10 coming up right here. He climbed up near the lip, and it cost him the gold medal. Right oh, there, and he hits the woodwork. 
So he likes that eye line. He was right, right up there yesterday. Oh, he the got challenges wow. there too. Boy, I think all the sleds are going to be out of control there. Not as bad as a lot of Myers, but it wasn't far off, was it? <laughs> I don't think the sled got airborne on that exit to 12 to 13, but there's a lot of tail there to wag the dog when the when the back end gets moving. See the guys rushing it out to the far end, so it's getting pulled around the far end of the wall. 51, 26. Wow. Three tenths ahead of the Russians. Yeah. Well, he's likely to be at the top end of the field and them at the bottom. Let's take look a little load oh, again. Oh, they got caught hitting that yeah. push bar, and look at the push bar doesn't want to come in. Now watch these lines. He's going to the curve 10, so he hits, he has to go to the middle of the curve. Now watch the line, and I think he hit the roof. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing he did in the World Championships when he lost the double gold medal. Look at these pictures. Whoa. Yeah. Hard to get these four-man sleds in trouble, but when they do, Crikey. they have a mind of their own. Yeah. Once they get going, they take a lot of stopping. Yeah. Let's talk about it. in the background yelling about the push bars. Well, let's see if we can get away without a mishap at the start for Chris Spring. Cam Stones, Josh Kirkpatrick, Neville Wright. Door is open here. Yeah, Spring has been having a stellar year. His best ever four man World Cup result, third in Park City, came in November this year. Look at, they're waiting for the light to turn green. Look how quickly they're going to go. Remember, the other teams take it 20. There, it just went. Look, yeah. so that's good coaching. The other teams are high fiving each other, getting in. Get off the block as quickly as you can. Why is it taking two? Trouble. And that was uh, Cam Stones, but he managed to fling yeah. himself into the sled. He's got up, he's got in. Speed, 50 kilometer speed here is going to sentence them 49 9. That's going to, he's going to have to hustle here in the bottom to make sure they make the second. But he knows how to hustle. Had a really good run in the two man yesterday. Yeah, but you throw out a parachute like that at the top of this track, which is all about a start track. He's going to be a second three. behind. They're he'll hanging be, in there, though. He'll be struggling to be in front of Alana Myers at the moment. Half a second back with half the track still to go. Good lines. He'll pick up speed now. 1045's decent speed. That's better speed than some of the other sleds. And the Germans were arguing about a push bar not coming in. Look at these lines. This is as good as yep. any line we've seen yet of six sleds, but they fell at the start. Look at him come back. All right. He's beat three sleds. Well, he's ahead good of Jabrun Lutz. So, he, yeah. so he's going to make the field. It's 4,500s back. 51.83, though. We're saying 51.60 is going to be the number. We could see, if they make the field, we could send, see them in the leader's box a long, long time because spring is absolutely on fire this season. Yeah, he's got third, fifth, so third, let's, heated fifth. Let's watch here. Cam Ooh. Stone's on the right of your picture. His foot slips off the bale. Now he's got to that. haul himself in off the bar. What athleticism. Look at the yeah. strength he's got yeah. to pull himself in. And there he is. Gets his feet around his driver. He gets no a clonk on the head. Look, no panic from no. his guys. No panic. Right. They're in late, but Give they're credit. in. I mean, this, 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 it's a tough day. Yeah. Great job. Well, listen, snow in the spikes, you know, this is always, it's going to be an issue for everybody, really is. Next up for Russia is Alexander Kazinov. Ninth here last year, four four-man wins in his career, including two in Whistler, one in Park City, and one in Pyeongchang. He's Surprise. never won in Europe. Surprise. Look, the Canadians went on the, like the Germans. Bang, as soon as you could, could. The Russians are going to get here and let 20 seconds of snow come in the track. So what's going on with the lights? I don't know. No, no. They know. They just took their time. Yeah, but the Canadians had to wait. They waited for the light to turn 60, and they went within five seconds. But they had to wait for the light. They were ready. Okay. They were ready to go. These guys yeah. are 22 seconds. No, no, I agree. So 17 seconds worse of snow, and dealing with hundreds of seconds means a lot. 507 getaway. This is a pretty intact team here. 50.8. Boy, it's going to be tough to overcome that speed deficit. Kazinov's claimed 14 four-man medals in World Cup, two in Sochi, nine in North America, and just three in Europe. Boy, for the bad velocity out of curve one, that's pretty good speed there. He cries, only two tenths back. He stopped the bleeding. And this looks like a couple top two run here. Oh, huge. Well, ahead of teammate Alexei Stulnev at the moment. So Stulnev and Andrinov second and third behind leader for Smoothie was. He's got the best lines through that bottom part of the track of anybody. Their second place. He got beat by 800s at the start, only 26 at the bottom. And look how clean he drove that sled down where every other sled's had a problem. Yep. 
ex except for Chris Spring, but Chris had that little mishap in the first 50 meters. Yeah, neat line through the labyrinth. In and get down. You think this is easy? Look at the little bail they have to jump on. Then they, it's just like a total cohesion, sitting down, no problems with the push bar rubbing up on the side. One of the best entries in the sled we've seen yet. Now they have to get into an aerodynamic profile. A lot of things we take for granted in this sport, Martin. Yeah. Well, you see when it goes wrong, like with Chris Springs, guys, how wrong it can go. Next up, ninth of our starters, Lamindina, Great Britain. Her best World Cup result was the silver medal in Whistler back in November. A red letter day for him in the four-man. Finished 20th in the race here last year. And crashed out in the World Championships when he was in contention for a medal a year before. This should be a five flat or a low five, maybe even the, in the sub five start. Remember the Germans hit the push bar, hit the right wall. They didn't five, five ten. Surprised at that. This team medaled earlier in the year. 50.5 speeds, not very good speed. Surprised. Maybe just being a little conservative when you see the yeah, Canadians, Canadians not getting yeah. in. Made good point. Get in, get down, yeah. and maybe risk it a bit yeah, more in the second go. Nah. To me, you gotta risk it. You gotta let it all go. Since it's such an emphasis on the start here. It's you could take a casual ride down the track and finish 10th, or you could go for it. I like to, you know, crash or go home, you know. Like, well, don't forget, they're trying to bring in the points to elevate themselves up the starting order for the Olympic Games. And so that's Lamy. Oh. He's made focus very rocky at the bottom of the labyrinth, but he is fifth of the line behind the Russians and Francesco Friedrich. 51.76. Well, that's good. That, but we're going to have to move my time of 51.60. I gotta believe yeah, it's otherwise there's only five slides in, in out of nine right so far. We got a tie right behind him. Chris Spring and Evo de Bruyne tied 700s behind Lamin Dean for sixth place. This is oh, you saw that sled rock, and then this is exit of nine. Look, can we see any heads back there? Yeah, we can see shoulders. Gets the Not skid too going much there. air. Yeah, you can see the heads bopping up there. Then watch this. Watch the sled roll back towards the right. Whoa! Wow. That's yeah. 1,370 pounds at 78 miles an hour, almost rolling in an opposite direction. Tenth sled of 25 here in Innsbruck in Austria. Cody Baskew, 25th place in last year's race, but boy, he's really come on strongly this season. Best four-man result for Cody. Silver in Lake Placid in November. Weinstock battling the float. Now, Weinstock and Langton have been slid and sliding with Olsen. Mm -hmm. They did a switch up here during the week. Well, this is all part of the jigsaw, isn't it? Trying to work out which combination of four works best. Here we Again, go. Now, watch. See how long wait for the lights. What's Let's... going on with the lights today? Well, no, just, now, watch how quickly the Americans go, like the Germans, within five seconds. So that's just good strategy by the teams. Now let's see if these these guys posted some unbelievable start times in training. 499. 499, now, that's a great getaway. The velocity, 51-1 is what Friedrich had, but Friedrich's push bar, 51 flat. Not even as good as the Germans, and their push bar hit the side wall. But that might be the trick of the trade of getting around that first curve. Stephen Holcomb, the only American driver to win here since the pre-Torino season. Took half a dozen medals in four-man, including victory in 2006. Ooh, late there, oh, very late. Huge Big skid. mistake. That's going to be huge. Well, he cost. was in second place before the Chrysler. But six to is seven, good time. and he's still in second place. But he's lost two tenths oh, just with that big carbon skid. there. This is the night train, too, that Holcomb used to Not drive. Bad. Top three, fourth at the line. That's but, a decent run. Yeah, but when you have the best start time like that, 499, that cost him two tenths there. He should be in second, except for that. That's the worst line we've seen in Chrysler of any sled that's come down so far. Well. Take a look at this. Look how high he is, then he dives, and the sled comes back up in centrifugal force, and its back runner was in the air. Look at the skid. Four-man slides, it's impossible to make them do stuff like that, but when they do, that's two-tenths, maybe three-tenths, Martin. He could be up there within a tenth of the lead.
Ten sleds down, Francesco Frujic leads from Alexander Kazianov and Alexei Stolnev. We still have 15 to go here in Innsbruck. Track is clear for our second four-man world champion. The reigning European champion, Hannes Lochner, was disqualified in last year's race. Ten hundreds before they went. They should get low fives. Two wins, five. two wins already this season in the four-man at Park City in Winterberg. Five uh, four-man wins in 12 World Cup starts. 500s back, but only two tenths of a kilometer down to their teammate. And now he's 1100s. That's all relative. That 500s at the start immediately doubles to 11. Now he hopes to stop the bleeding at the next clock, which he does. Parents are here. Big delegation from Birch's Garden, where he's from. Saw them all before the race. 105! That is a magical number no one's got close to. 77.5 miles an hour. Very skiddy in the labyrinth, but at that speed, it's always going to be for the lead. No, 800's off. Well, so Germany 1 2. Could be 500's back at the start, and to only lose by eight at the bottom. He was flying. No one got that type of 105 speed yet, and he's coming the 11th sled down, Martin. Track does get cut up with these big, huge 1,385 pound sleds with the teams in them. Well, the other thing, of course, is that it's still snowing and they're not sweeping every inch of the track, so more snow builds up with every sled. Curve 10, does he hit the roof like his teammate? There's yep, not right much there. room there to, might have been able to put a matchbook through it, but here, look at the head. Whoa, the number three guy really got jolted, and this is the reason why. Boy, these four mans, the only guy come, has come through there clean is Kazanov. Joshua Bloom. Yep, back on the squad for the first time here in Europe uh, in the last couple of weeks. Look how quickly these Canadians go. Bang. Justin Cripps, seventh last year. Silver medal in Park City in November, his best four-man World Cup result. Good start. As a Five driver. Flat, great start. So if they, should, if they get that 51 magical speed or velocity, as we call it here, they have a chance. 50.9. Close enough. Cripps actually has one four-man victory to his name in 2008 in January. Pierre Luders won in Cortina in four-man with Cripps on the back handles. It's a long time ago. Yeah, it is a bit. 9 it's a little bit off of Lochner. Still up to second place. He's ahead of Lochner on the split times. This is a really good run from Justin Cripps. A little 4-8, a little bit down to Lochner there. He's been on the podium almost every time out this season. So close, he's in third place, 12 hundredths of a second back. This will push the Russians out of contention. Nine, Nine hundredths back. Run. That's a good run. That's a hundred slower than the world champion, Johannes Lochner, and 900 slower than the world champion, Francesco Friedrich. Friedrich went sixth, Lochner and Cripps went 11th and 12th. Well, Cripps seventh last year. That's matching his improvements everywhere this season. Cripps was silver eighth, fourth, and fourth from his four starts in the four-man. Okay, look at the heads. Look at the back head that I sled come off the ice. Cripps does pretty good getting over there on the terms, his terms. Yeah, look how neat it was. This is pretty good. Oh, <laughs> spoke too airborne. soon. Oh. Yeah, trying to get these things turned, not easy, but Justin Cripps lying in third. And here's our third German, Nico Walter, the European silver medalist from last year. Four four-man wins, two in Park City, Utah. He's also won in Winterberg and his home track in Altenburg. He was fourth in the World Championship here two years ago, but he's so good in the four-man, he's had 12 podiums in just 27 World Cup starts in four-man. Watch how quickly they go. So his teammate went within nine seconds. Friedrich went within five seconds. The Americans went within nine. Here they go. Let's see. They, well, they're doing a high five. Friedrich didn't do any of that. Boom. Gone. Friedrich was already gone. And dealing with hundreds of seconds, especially on this track. So they well, took them about 14 seconds to go. But like all competitors, when you have a routine that you've got in your head, you want to go through it, and they take that option. 504 getaway for Nico Walter. 
boy, there's a lot of good talent on top of this track spread out of no kidding. a number of teams. No kidding. This is such a competitive season in all the five disciplines. Never seen the athleticism in the sport that there is now. 11 hundreds of a second, fourth place that's, at the moment. That's about norm. It stops the bleeding, keeps it at 11, 12. Well, might have stopped the bleeding there. Good exit here. And Nico Walter, he knows how to get down these tracks, but he just dropped a couple more hundreds. That's not going to help. Try to get control of the yeah. sled. Speed late. is down. Low line in corner 10 compared to his teammates. Boy, he's off the pace here. The only man in an FES four-man sled. His teammates are both in Valnerbilt sleds and across the line, fourth Four. place. 21 hundreds back. Didn't do bad on the bottom. Well, since they come back to Europe and Hannes Valner has changed around the sleds being used by Friedrich and Lochner. He's updated them, upgraded them. Uh, they have caught back up to Nico Walter. Sixth place here last year. Nico currently lying in fourth. He's still happy. a medal threat. Well, this wasn't perfect, so we're going to watch the exit of curve nine and watch the runner tips. This is the, he knows he's in a skid, so he's trying to get the sled back in neutral. Look at that. Well, that's friction going across the ice, and boy, it's tough to get the four mans to change direction. But look at the way he steered hard off a 12 into 13 and didn't have a bad entry and exit of 13, but that might have been too much steering. Germans rule down time then for some Latvians. This is last year's winner, Oscars Melbardis, 2015 European champion. That race he won in, that title he won in La Plan. And he's had four straight four-man wins here, including the 2016 World Championships. 501, not bad for a team that's probably about 85%. 50.9, everybody's getting that 50.9 speed, the last four sleds. And this is his king discipline. He's had nine four-man World Cup wins, 16 further podiums as a driver, and that discounts anything as a brakeman. Whoa, that's off the mark. 1400s, he's in sixth position behind Nico Walter and Alexander Kasyanov. Great exit Good from nine to 10. 47 is better than Walter. 65.1, Friedrich was fastest, he's closing, now he's ahead of Kasyanov, closing down Nico Walter, can he get into the top three at the line? Fifth, no, 200s behind Nico Walter. So we have five sleds separated by 2300s. Yep. six by 26. And now we start to look at that time. What did I say, 60? Well, I reckon Chris Spring and Ivo De Bruyne tied in 11th on a Mm, I think they might both possibly be in trouble on a 51.83. Let's take a look again at the start for the Latvians. That's one of their strong points. Well, that was a weird line in yeah. there. It comes deep into it. Came off Came late, off. didn't look it? At that late, but I those three guys worked. Boy, that lucky curve 13 down there is challenging these teams. Challenged the woman's Bob and two man Bob also. Yeah. And the skeleton, everything. Oscar's keeper man is next up for Latvia. Eighth place in last year's race. He's had one World Cup win in four man. That was in Samaritz in January of this year. And only one other four man podium. And that was, he took the silver medal in Pyeongchang in March in the Olympic test event. It took 15 seconds, 17 seconds to go, so I question that. But it's not an awful lot of snow now. Not I mean, now. No, almost right. completely stopped. Yeah, so you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit less of a worry for them. See if they get the 50.9 speed, velocity, 50.7. That's the worst of the last seven sleds. Six fastest getaway for Oscar's keeper Manis. But he immediately jumps out to 1600s deficit. On the podium in both two-man and four-man races in Pyeongchang, the Olympic test event. So if he can repeat that form in the games, oh boy. Yeah, I think that they're just relaxing the Latvians. I don't think they've got the, the water turned on full yet. Eighth place. Nice early height in 10, and that allows you to really sweep down into the labyrinth. Whoa, but he's whoa, very late. Total in the air, that's flat. Up to seventh at the line, ahead of Alexei Stulnev. So again, splitting the Russians. 
And 27 hundreds back, top seven covered by 27 hundreds of a second. Tell you what, though, when you're sitting in there in a break, man, you know, this is one of the easy tracks. This is not one that people easy. fear, but easy. when you're in the labyrinth, I bet your stomach is in your mouth a couple of times. Well, these lines here, right side, but pretty good. Then he gets down there, lucky 13, and watch the back. Look at that slide, though. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> Tough to get these big sport utilities in a skid, but when they go into a skid, you can't bring them back. What fantastic pictures down there. Nick Polignato of Canada finished in the bronze medal position, his first ever World Cup medal yesterday, only to find that the sled was excluded. It was four millimetres too narrow in the opening of the cowl, and the team put that down to a couple of crashes that it's had this season. Now he's got to put that behind him and turn it around for his 14th World Cup start in the four-man competition. Well, he came on so strong last year, and like his teammates, Chris Spring and Justin Cripps, he's really pushing hard this year. Look at this. Look how quickly they go. That's the magic. That's the magic procedure. The guy leading the race, he did it in four seconds. Yep. So they're Canadian, Canadian team in and down. 5.08. So anything around 50.6 or 7 is decent. 50.5. Talked to the Sellers Brown after yesterday's medal before the bad news, and he was saying he'd been over to Francesco Friedrich and said, We're going to beat you at the start in the two man in the games. That's how confident he feels. That's a 43 year old guy saying that too. And, uh, you know, and I bet you Friedrich didn't say game on. He goes, yeah. Okay, we'll see you there. Yeah, that, that ain't bragging either. No. He's not called King for nothing. 3100s back. This is a top 10 Eight. run. Oh! Little squirrely. 22nd, didn't make the field last year, but this is an entirely different caliber of Nick Polignato driving this yeah, year. Hit, the lights came on for him at the World Championships last year in the two man when he finished top, the top 10. 51 7 1. That's great for him. Considering the start, yeah. 10th tied with Maxim Andrinov. Teammate Chris Spring in 13th tied with Ivo De Brun. And Evo's wife, Christine, of course, also a bobsledder. She slides for Canada. She finished in the top ten yesterday, right? Yeah. Okay, exit of uh, nine. Not his best. A little late. Watch this crush. Bang! That's worth some time. Maybe a tenth, not more. Well, they feel that uh, this race weekend owes them something, so he's out to go and get it with the boys. Derek Plug on the sled for the first time this week. Next up, Rico Peter of Switzerland, silver medalist last year. And in fact, Rico Peter has picked up silver medal or medals. He was bronze in the Worlds the year before. So he's had two podium finishes in the last two years. Before that, his teammate Bert Hefty was uh, the Swiss who scored the medals here. One World Cup four-man win. And that was in Lake Placid December last year. Snow coming in again. Mm -hmm. Silver medalist in Pyong Chang in the four man in March. Look how quick and efficient. Oh, oh hits the ball. It's trouble. And that's the end of that. Hits yeah. the short wall before they even get to a turn. Look like so cohesive moves into the slap. Nice 50.3 is the only person worse was Chris Spring at 49.9, but Chris Spring's guy fell at the start. And that on this track, you know, in Altenburg or you know, Whistler, you can make a mistake like that. Not here. Well, he's gone from 10 hundreds sitting down to 32 hundreds back. He's in 11th place at the moment, ahead of Lamin Dean, still ahead of Lamin Dean. So despite that disaster at the start where he That's hit not the very wall, good there. Four to five, two, oh, and he hits the whip. Yep. That's the third sled, at least two. Oh, at he's late there. Friedrich. Late here, watch out. Boy, he did a lot of steering down here. I, you know, he's a reckless driver. Wow. Nine Nine place. Place. That's not bad. For all that, what he just did. 10 fastest start, ninth at the bottom. You could hear somebody yelling brakes there at the top of their voice to make sure they don't run out of ice and up the rubber. So what happened? Did he not get his feet on the D-rings? Did his feet get caught in them? Did he not have them for some reason? Watch his handle, it's in early. He should have control. And he's always trying to steer back, so yeah. he's got control, but you know. It looks like it just skidded sideways on him. I, no idea where that happened. Yeah. And here, well, he taps here. Now he goes to the middle of the curve. He's got no choice but to go up there and 
That's got to be touching the roof. Then down here, watch him carve his way through curve 12 and 13. Look at the change of direction. Mm. Surprised he's in the top 10. Well, that's, yeah. You know what happens when you get ice skates sideways like that? Same thing here. 18th of our sleds is Brad Hall of Great Britain, 18th place in the race last year. This is his 12th four-man start in the World Cup. Best was bronze in Park City in November this year. So, while well, their teammates didn't get low fives, let's see what these four guys can do. They're in and down efficiently. Four, that's a great start. He's so they should be 50.8 at least. Raced here twice in four Manning World Cup. Nine. 26. That's excellent. 26 two years ago, 18th last year. First ever World Cup medal in North America for Brad Hall. And that was only his ninth World Cup start as well. That's quite early to get in amongst the medals. A little sloppy up there at curve four, five. It's only 1900s back. Seventh place at the moment. This is pretty good. Looking nice and smooth, but ninth Runner place. Tips. All right, he's got good, good control, but the speed is starting to drift out of the sled. Have they gone for runners that are biting the ice too much? 11th place off a fifth fastest start with no mistakes. And that looks like it might be runner choice. 51-64. Late in the heat, too. 10th place. 100th ahead of Bascu. Well, he's only 400s behind Rico Peter. And seven behind Stulnev in eighth. And 1,200s away is the top half dozen. So I think we're going to move it from 60 to 75. What do you think? OK with you? Yeah, well, 51, Chris 75. Happy with that. Let's take a look at the load. Brad Hall gets in. Behind him, Nick Gleason, Andy Matthews, and Greg Cackett on the back handles. Matthews in at three. You know, with the problems we've seen up there, that was a very good entry into the sled by that British team. A little bit more snow starting to drift down as well now. As we get to Austria's Benny Meyer, the 23-year-old local hero. Bronze in the European Championships last year. Silver in San Moritz in the Europeans the year before. And that was really his big red letter. That was his big turning point when he realized, actually, yes, I, this really does work. Moldovan, the brakeman, is not fit, is what his coach told me. All right. Manfred Meyer. So they're going to get the start that he needs, he says. But... Look, they're so ready to go. When that clock turns green, they're going to be out of there in four seconds, yeah. which is the proper technique. Watch. They need to have their huddle and get gone. It is Friedrich snowing a lot more now. Friedrich didn't even do the now. high five stuff. Friedrich just went. Yeah, Friedrich went, and everybody has to keep up with him. Yeah. Two silver medals in the World Cup in four-man in Koenigsee and San Moritz two seasons ago. He's yet to rediscover that form this That's year. That's decent. That's very, very good. Yeah, that is very good, especially if Donat Moldovan's not quite fit. 5.04. 50.9 is as good as like, this the third. Ties for the third yeah. best velocity. Just one-tenth of a mile an hour away from the fastest of them all. And he's 1,200s down, which he was five at the start, then 12 at the next clock. Stops the bleeding. He's got a chance. Round through the 270-degree Kreisel. 2100s back, still in seventh place. That's a little drift. A little 4 2 is not excellent. It's late in the heat, so the ice might not have any speed left. 123 6. Boy, he made it through there as good as anybody. And across the line, 10th place, 51 61. So everybody's coming down in 10th at the moment. He just bumps Brad Hall down to 11th by 300s. He's 100th behind Rico Peter and 400s behind Alexei Stulnev in eighth. So again, we're going to have, like we have had in every competition, between 5 and 20, probably no more than two tenths of a second, covering 15 or so, so sleds. Good. Everything about the start here for the option. Look at the number two guy waiting for the three to get down and watch him just drop right into his position. Watch his arms. This is a technique they practice. Look at him pull his, his face shield down all in one cohesive move. Last push bar comes in. That didn't come in the way they wanted it to. Yeah. Good velocity. Everything about that start was good. Yep. Nicely done. Next up is our 20th sledge. This is Frenchman Loic Kosteg. Didn't go in the two-man race again yesterday. He's concentrating on the four-man. But uh, his teammate, Roman Heinrich, had a great time hanging out in the leader's box in the two-man race. 14th place, personal best for him. Congratulations. 
Sixth place in Whistler in November was Loic Costerge's best ever four-man result. The French are really finding form this season. Costerge taking on the persona of his coach, Bruno Mangeau, yeah. who was a four-man specialist. He used the two-man as a warm-up, but Costerge doesn't even want to use the two-man. Well, what they want to do is try and qualify his teammate, Roman Heinrich, for the games as well for the two-man and keep Loic for the four-man. Well... One of the worst starts in that extra five there. A little back end issue. He's going to need a few more meters on the track to find pace. This is about 100 meters shorter than last week in Winterberg. He's coming now. Didn't do the four man race here last year, so it's been a couple of seasons since he's been on the Innsbruck he's got ice. Half a kilometer better speed than Meyer. He's nice just going to run out line. of track. This 16. is huge speed here. Up to 15, perhaps by the line. 77 and a half miles an hour at the bottom, as fast as Johannes Lochner. That's equal top speed at the bottom. And that's what you expect from a Bruno Mijon built sled is that it has great top end speed, and they're onto the rubber. And those are the race runners, and that is a bit of a disaster. The rubber, it's not just that it's rubber, but it's got you know, grit and muck and everything else, and, and that may well have gouged up their runners. Look at the back end, came up a little bit, but Lloyd Costas is showing us. Look how quickly he got on the curve on his terms, not the curve, and how's he skid here? That's as good a line as we've seen. That's how, with the deficient start time that he had. What do you have for a start? He had the 18th best 14, start, yeah, 5, drove him into 15th. Yeah. There's a lot of people who would like to improve from their start to their finish like he just did. 20 sleds down. Francesco Friedrich and Johannes Lochner, the world champions, are separated by just eight hundreds of a second. We have five more to go. For the remaining five sleds, it is go fast or go home. Two U.S. Athletes coming up next, Nick Cunningham, first of them. Didn't race here in the World Cup last year, only did one World Cup last season. Good entry into the sled there, 507 or 506, not bad. So, ooh, looked like that sled got up on the curve too much there, and that's no speed, 50.5. Best four-man result for him, bronze in Lake Placid in November 2012. Pretty good yesterday in the two-man, top five. Yeah, best here in 2014. He finished in fourth place. That was probably in night train one. He would get his eye teeth to have that sled back right now. He's not feeling the love from this current sled. Oh, he's going to hit the lip here. 15th yeah. place, needs to find some speed at the bottom. 22.7, one of the lower speeds we've seen of any sled that's come down the track today. And again, no major mistakes. He's in 19th place, and out goes Alana Myers-Taylor. As expected there. But Cunningham is in danger of not making the cut as well. And we understand, understand that he's not coming back to race in Europe after Christmas. And he'll be happy to take any sled other than the one he's got at the moment in the four-man. Yeah, look at him. That's all I got. Little tap here. Boy, this sled, look at the skid there in the 10. That's why I said he's going to hit the lip, because that threw him into the, that's like the two Germans that hit the lip there, but yep. didn't cost them time like it did Nick Cunningham. Yeah. Well, this sled was partially destroyed in the fire and then broke Ten the front years end ago. of the chassis. Ten years ago. And then the, the chassis damage, I'm not sure it's quite where it should be. Next up, Justin Olsen, 21st here last year, when he was still in his rookie season. 10th. This is his 10th World Cup in four-man as a driver. Couldn't tell you how many he did as a brakeman. Probably could, but it would take the rest of the day. See how quickly these guys go. Their teammates were going within eight, nine seconds. Now, ironically, his best ever four-man World Cup result, 12th place in Lake Placid, December 16. That was his World Cup driving debut in four-man. So they were off within seven seconds. Should be a low five start. It'll swerve into the first corner, 505 is not a bad getaway. 50.7 probably, that skid didn't look very well. He's on the wrong side of the wall, 50.6. You know, the coaches are saying that Justin's just driving too much, especially up top. Let's watch the head snap right here. Eh, not too bad, good aerodynamic. 
profile by his team. Well, the last two tracks, Winterberg and Eagles, are tracks that really don't need a lot of driving compared to somewhere like Lake Placid or where we go next after Christmas, which is Altenburg. This is a brand new four-man, got a combination of different chassis and cowlings. Put together by Richard Lovett. Steve! Oh, big skin. That's the example of too much steering right there. Uh, holds it together at the bottom 15. for 15th place. You'll make the cut. And that out goes Matthias Lutia Poland. Nick Cunningham is in 20th with uh, one, two, three to go. Yeah, you're, I got to believe Clemens Brocker and Marcus Treichel coming up could knock. And Dominic, well, Trichel didn't qualify last year. Dvorak did, as did Clemens Bracker. Well, he just stared too much, but he's only got how much? Look at the, look at the rudder tips there. Yikes. That's what we call the Robin Hood. Well, you know, it was smooth through there, but that too much steering, steering is friction. It's so friction. his 10th World Cup starting yep, format. Yeah, probably got the least experience of anybody in the field. Not quite, but getting on for, yeah. Well, next up is Marcus Treichel of Austria. This is his ninth four-man World Cup start. Spent a lot of time, like Justin Olsen, as a brakeman. 23rd place last year. And his best result had been a pair of 17ths in February last season in Koenigsee and St. Moritz. He's working on trying to qualify himself for Austrians to get two sleds into the field. He's been on the Europa Cup. One World Cup race last week, 24th in Winterberg. Secret for this Austrian team is to try and get a 5'10 or better start. They get in nicely, Ooh. little drag down the line, 509. Okay, so that mission accomplished, and now they got another 1,100 meters to conquer. 2.5, that's pretty good. 14th place at the start. I think he's going to do it. Brand new Walmer sled, 2 and the 4. Saw his father yesterday. His father's real excited about him making the cut. 91.5 is pretty good. It's better than Olsen. Up to 13th place. So this is ahead of Andrianov and Polignato. Now slipping out to 15th ahead of Lloyd Kosterg. Good lines. 104.5s, excellent. Good height in 10. Can he control the speed in the labyrinth? Looks good. Yeah, no skid. This is this is a good drive. Meet run, 14th, maybe 13th That's of the excellent. line. 12th, it's coaches tied with Cody Coaches Baskiv. are going to love that. And out goes Nick Cunningham. Coaches are going to love that. He's a young Austrian pilot. Listen to him. That's Marco Rangel, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> you got to go back up and do it again. Hey, they did a great job at the start. Good velocity. Push. Let's watch the push bars here. We still think that one of our guys in the truck telling us that it does hit the window yeah, over there on the right. Yeah, it does. Boy, those guys in the truck don't miss anything, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> You'd never guess to look at them, would you? <laughs> Sorry, brother. They're, they're... <laughs> Sorry, boys. Next up, two to go. Dominic Dvorak is first for the Czech Republic. And in the drop zone is a pair of sleds, Chris Spring and Ivo De Bruyne, tied 19th, will either both be in or both be out. I've got to wait for the guy. The clock's gone. There's the snow coming in. Mm -hmm. Eighth World Cup start for Dominic Dvorak as a driver. Best four-man was two 19th places last year in Altenburg and in Eagles here. Good start, 5'10", that puts him in the picture, doesn't it? Yeah, 50.5 will be the number he's going to need. He's got that. 16th place at the start. So far, he's in the race. Now, can he keep the speed in the sled? He did pretty good in the two-man yesterday. Not as good as he did last year. 100-meter sprinter in the front seat. And Look at the team now. Can we see any shoulders? Can we, can we see the we need some air back there? Some, not a good aerodynamic profile on the back of that sled I'm looking at right there. You can see too much of the shoulders. Drifting out to 18th place. Little wriggle between 9 and 10. Every one of these tiny adjustments is going to be crucial now. Rocking and rolling through the labyrinth. He's going to be close, but I think he's in. He is yes. in. And Chris Spring and Ivo De Bruyne are tied for 20th. So he is in. Wow. We now have a tie for 20th, and I one think... sled could break two, well, eight hearts yeah. or not. Well, I think Clemens Bracker is going to do that. 
51.80 puts him 300s in, so 51.82 two will be the mark to make the race now look at the back end come up airborne and does he carve his way around 13 no is that, this is pretty good mm -hmm. oh his lines are definitely That's spot good. on yeah oh, well he had some Fresh issues late he had some issues <laughs> well i tell you if we combine that shot for all 25 sleds there's gonna be an awful lot worse than that and a few better they could do a highlight reel just from that curve. Final sled in the heat here is Clemens Prasher, 12th last year on his World Cup debut. This is his third ever World Cup start in four-man. 12th and Eagles was his best. He was 17th last week in his second race in Whistler, having won the two-man the day before. What he did he do in the two-man yesterday? He took the bronze medal. This guy is not Mr. Excitable. You no. know, last year, when, last week when he won the World Cup two-man event, I could barely get a smile out of him. Yeah. Now, I told you last week he looked like somebody. Look at that. That's Bert Hefty pushing in his prime. The look of him is exactly the same. Good. The fact that he's Good. pushing Good. a Swiss load, but look at the yeah. start. 19. 24th best start out of 25 teams. Wow. That is surprising. I'm not sure that uh, all what his guys there? are quite as quick as him and Mikkel Quonen, the brakeman. I'm surprised at that, though. They're four tenths down, and he better find some magical ice down here to get into that top 20. The man at three, Marcel Dobler, is one of the A team from Billy Meyerhans' crew. Forgot about Billy Meyerhans. Oh, never forget the Billy Meyerhans. 24th place for Clemens Brasher. He was in 12th place in last year's race, but it looks as though he is not going to make the cut here. Up to 23rd. Oh, look at the head transition. Oh, he skidded into the... And he does he not make the cut. He's Boy, just something. out by Boy, 300 of a second. 300, he would have tied with Spring and De Bruyne, and he'd have been in. 300. This is a tough track for those hundreds of a second. So Clemens Brescia and his crew just m miss out. So does Nick Cunningham by five hundreds of a second. Matthias Luti by seven hundreds. Alana Myers-Taylor by four tenths of a second. But while down at the bottom, any tiny one of these areas. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Well, he was in you, until that yeah. final corner wow, skid. That that was that's unbelievable to see. He almost rolled that yeah. into the finish curve. He was he was holding the nose way down there, wasn't he? And wow. Yeah. All that mass just dragged the tail back up the hill. Well, there's Clemens Brasher in the background. He'll be disappointed with that. Well, but you only get one shot here, and he didn't make the most of it. The guy who did, though, is our four-man world champion, Francesco Friedrich. He took his first medal of the season in Winterberg last year with bronze in the four-man. Last oh. week with bronze in the four-man. He won yesterday in the two-man, but... He had the same type of run in the two-man. Yeah. Rough time through 13. But the Valner sled is flying sideways, backwards. Doesn't seem to matter. I didn't even have the greatest of starts, but Francesco Friedrich leads by a hair's breadth from Johannes Lochner. Cripps is in the medals, and at the moment, Nico Walter, Oskar Melbardis, Alexander Kazianov, and the rest may be fighting for the scraps from the tables. And boy, there are some tough battles. Three sleds there, 11th and joint 12th, covered by one hundredth of a second. A tie right behind them, a tie right behind them and then a tie for 20th spot. So, so there's going to be... 21 spots. Listen, we've had an insane season so far, John. This is race five of eight in the World Cup. I don't see it calming down any here. Join us for the second and final heat of the Innsbruck weekend. The sleds are on ice at 3.30 local in half an hour from now. That is 2.30, 14.30 GMT. We'll see you then. Bye for now.